This video will give some introductory comments on Mars, its orbit, and some of the large surface features. So we'll be uh, just doing a little introduction of uh, what there is to study for Mars. Of course, Mars is uh, very interesting. It's been a well-studied planet and will be continued to be investigated and explored in the future. Possible uh, home for human colony in the distant future. Uh, much more habitable than Mercury and Venus that uh, we've already discussed. So we're still in the terrestrial group of planets, our last terrestrial planet out from the Sun, Mars. And being further from the Sun has some uh, consequences for the temperature of Mars that we'll see that uh, has important uh, uh, things to say about presence of liquid water or not on Mars. So, Mars is uh, noticeably smaller than the Earth, bigger than Mercury. As far as where it's located in the sky, I have uh, three years of uh, some plots of uh, the positions of Mars. You can do this yourself at uh, space.jpl.nasa.gov. This is the view of the solar system and a two degree field of view would be important parameters to enter in. Uh, let the computer generate these positions. So, uh, October 15, 2012, uh, writing on the Earth right here, and Mars over here. Mars to the left of the Sun, that puts it in the evening sky. So, 2012, Mars is in the evening sky in October. And you can see, continue to be in the evening sky through November. And let's jump to 2013. Now Mars to the right of the Sun, so if you would imagine the Sun at sunset, you on the Earth looking at the Sun, to the right of the Sun would be below the horizon. Mars is not an evening object for 2013. Instead, it's a morning object. Um, if you put the Sun on the eastern horizon, Mars would be to the right along the ecliptic, and Mars would already be above the horizon. Mars rises before the Sun for October 2013 and that continues uh, into the fall. Now 2014 we have Mars to the left of the Sun. This should not be a surprise uh, because the synodic period of Mars is a little over two years. So 2012 Mars is in the evening sky in October. 2014 Mars is in the evening sky in October. And, uh, of course, the Sun is not this big uh, gray disk in the middle here. It's a small dot in the middle, just for that scaling factor. But uh, 2015 in April, and uh, Earth here, Mars here, will be difficult to view. Uh, Mars, the Sun and Mars are getting closer and closer together in the sky. This is being recorded in fall of 2014. But, so, Mars is interesting historically for some of the visual observations that were made of Mars in the 1800s. Um, Hubble telescope view over on the left and drawings of the uh, hemispheres of Mars that were made in the 1800s. And these drawings showed a lot of imagination. You can see some of the major uh, similarities between you know, the polar caps uh, being represented on the drawing and these borders of these uh, light and dark uh, areas are represented on the drawing as well. But there is uh, absolutely no evidence for these long lines on the surface of Mars. Uh, and there was an Italian astronomer who, uh, you know, very faithfully did his best to observe Mars and, and make charts of the surface of Mars. and labeled these uh, long lines canali and the word got mistranslated into English as canals you know, the canali means a channel but uh, got translated as canals and that prompted a lot of speculation to have a canal that implies some intelligence uh, building a waterway to transport water from one region to another to uh, you know supply the cities on Mars well there are no cities on Mars and uh, we'll, we'll see that uh, before too long in some of the photographs. But prompted a lot of interest in Mars. Uh, Percival Lowell uh, 
promoted this as uh, you know a theory that there were Martians who were building canals, and uh, Percival Lowell uh, has uh, has the Lowell Observatory named after him near Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, I think it's open to the public. Never been there myself, but also uh, important as a uh, place to find Pluto. But 1965, spacecraft flies by Mars, gives the first uh, good view of the surface of Mars, and uh, quite a disappointment to a lot of people. No vegetation, we see a dry planet with craters, and no evidence of uh, cities or whatever you know you might have speculated was there. These missions to Mars have uh, you know, kind of a poor track record. Uh, roughly half of the missions have failed until more recent time have been more successful. But even over half, if we uh, exclude the more recent uh, missions down here to the right. But very difficult to get to Mars and uh, slow down and go into orbit or uh, land safely on Mars. So. There have been many failures, but that's part of uh, science. You do an experiment and it doesn't work. You know, these mechanical systems, the spacecraft, have uh, very complicated systems and not always uh, uh, able to complete their mission. So we have uh, Mars here viewed by the Hubble Space Telescope at opposition when Mars was uh, very close to the Earth in 2003, and close, you know, 35 million miles, still, I don't know, 100 times the distance of the Earth to the Moon, um, or more. But uh, opposition is the best time to view the, the planets that have orbits uh, greater than the size of the orbit of the Earth. And here we see the Hubble telescope giving us uh, some indication there are some interesting features on Mars that uh, need to be explored a little bit more. So that was done. This global view, I believe, is from the Viking Orbiter, 1976. And you see here plotted out the successful landing missions. Viking 1 and 2 in 1976. Uh, Pathfinder in the late 1990s. Uh, a rover. Uh, the Phoenix probe that dug underneath the uh, soil and found water ice. And Opportunity and Spirit. Uh, larger rovers about the size of a golf cart and Opportunity is still driving. These landed in 2004, both did, and uh, Spirit's no longer operational, but the Opportunity rover still collecting data. And then the Curiosity rover that's been on Mars since 2012 in August. A view from the Viking lander, lots of dirt, soil, sand, lots of rocks, no trees, no rabbits. Um, did some chemical testing of the soil, and most uh, scientists believe that there were chemical reactions that were there, but not evidence of life. We do not uh, have con we do not have confirmed evidence that there's life on Mars, but that will be tested in the future. Uh, meteorites from Mars have been identified from the minerals that are in them, and uh, inside the gas that's trapped inside is similar to the atmosphere of Mars, and we have here. Uh, debatable, you know, is this a uh, fossil of life on Mars or is it due to a chemical reaction? And again, uh, not taken as evidence of life on Mars, of fossilized life on Mars. Uh, so still being studied, but uh, more likely some type of chemical reaction that bubbled along here and not evidence of life on Mars. The Viking Orbiter, in surveying the uh, surface of Mars, gave us a good view of Valles Marineris, this long uh, crack in the crust of Mars. Doesn't You can't see down to the core, but a crack in the crust of Mars as the crust expanded. There was a split that occurred here. And this is roughly the width of the United States. You put California over here, and you've got the state of New York over on the other side, a huge uh, feature on the surface of Mars, and then volcanoes that you can see over on the left side. These volcanoes, if you put them across the United States, you can see kind of the spread, you can see their individual size, and the largest volcano here, Olympus Mons, um, you know, it covers a good share of Washington and part of Oregon. Uh, put it in Nebraska, and it would go over halfway across the state of Nebraska. 
Here's from uh, above Olympus Mons. Satellites that orbit Mars can give us top-down views. But it is a feature that the lava has built up, a mountain. I think it's about three times as high as Mount Everest. Uh, certainly would have had a big impact on the atmosphere of Mars in the past. It's dormant now. There are no active volcanoes on Mars at this point. Old volcanoes, we know they're old because there are craters in the side. And again, NASA can do crater counts and give an approximate age um, for these volcanoes. They are not young volcanoes. So with that, that's where this video is going to end. And uh, stay tuned. Come back for discussion about ancient water and uh, current water, at least water ice on Mars. So keep reading. Ask some questions.